been a stroke my beard the whole time now. Apparently, the evangelical church loves the smell of beards and bedsteads. Where's your beard? Uh, sir, where's your beard? I don't care if your leader says you can wear a beard, honey. Beard's nothing more than pride. Jesus is the spirit brother of Lucifer. This is Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. I came to the conclusion, obviously, as you can see, that a man should not shave his face. It's commanded in the Old Testament. Michael Beverly here. Welcome to my channel. I thought we'd have a little bit of fun with this video and rate the beards of the believers and non-believer channels. Who has got the nicest beard on YouTube? All right, so let's get to it. We're going to count down from 10 to 1. And we're going to alternate between the believers and the non-believers. And please leave a comment if you think I missed somebody or if you don't like my choices. But more importantly, guys, we're going to talk about the differences between Mormonism and Christianity. Okay, coming in at number 10 is Alan Parr. This was a close call with his buddy, Mike Winger. I put Mike Winger in the introduction, gave the 10 spot to Alan Parr. Looks like he's... Got letting a little bit of hair grow. I hope he continues to let it grow out because he looks a lot more handsome and, and authoritative. I don't agree with the stuff he says, but he's got over a million followers and he's worth checking out if you're in this space. Um, I want all y'all to meet me on this mountain and you guys are gonna call on your false God and I'll call on my God and we're gonna see whose God is going to win. So they... That's another, that's another random aside. And I apologize, but it was funny. Like I had a, I have my certificate, my certificate for in Christian ministries. Okay. Coming in at number 10 on the non-believer side is David McDonald. He is the host of deep drinks podcast. This is a podcast where things are discussed relating to religion and philosophy and human rights. Lots of interesting guests on his podcast. And I suggest you check it out. Why is the Illuminati, who's supposed to be a secret society, telling their celebrity cohorts to go out and use symbolism to show the world that they're part of the Illuminati? Like, this makes no sense. It makes perfect sense. I'm going to uh, respond to his deconversion story here. Okay, coming in at number nine on the believer side is Braxton Hunter of Trinity Radio. He's the guy with the famous 10 questions for atheist video. Worldview discussions space. Fellow atheists can be so combative. And when atheists and Christians come up with lists of questions that they don't think the other side can answer, those questions usually aren't genuine. In reality, ditching religion entirely allows you to more thoughtfully examine issues that were dogmatic or ideological in nature. Coming in at number nine on the non-believer side is Vice Rhino. His channel is started as a response to pseudoscience, but lately he has been doing a lot of response videos to apologists and talking about Christianity, so he made my list. Hedging with the mysterious ways defense I see, so that even if you can't come up with a reasonable answer, it comes down to God's ways are above our ways. Never you mind that he could have made us with the capability of understanding why he does things the way he does and chose not to. Rejection and betrayal and humiliation and abuse and pain and torture and death, failure in in a Okay, coming in at number eight on the believer side is Friar Mike Schmitz of Ascension Presents. And now he doesn't always have a beard. I don't know if he gave up shaving for Lent, but he looks good with a beard. Maybe he'll keep growing it. We'll see. As a sidebar, I think Trent Horn ought to pay attention. It's commanded in the Old Testament. No cards to hand out to all of our students here on campus. Porn? Um, kick porn in the face, it says. <laughs> Blood wrought by death was the agent of purification. Okay, coming in at number eight is Dr. Kip Davis. You'll often find him on other channels live stream, but he does have his own channel. He is a specialist in Old Testament and Dead Sea Scrolls. And he's a smart Canadian with a cool beard. They told me quiet down, but I can't silence my demons. That was Kip Davis, dude. It's Kip. Kip. 
double pays. These fat fingers and telling Kip Davis here, and I would like to welcome you to my channel. Canada! <laughs> and I said I'd like to try LSD, so he got us tiny little thing about the size of my pinky. All right, coming in at number seven is the famous Ray Comfort, the banana man. I actually met Ray Comfort once in person, and he told me to my face I was never a real Christian. He's part of a team at Living Waters and also has a second channel, Just Witnessing. Ray Comfort's a lot of fun to make fun of, I have to admit. And he's got a nice looking beard for an Australian. He's a Kiwi, Udrongo. White dog walking about eight inches above the ground, floating in front of the television. I said, look, there's my dog. <laughs> and it really is slavery. It's not like they use these terms because they're flavor, flavorful, or it's not like this is just the way that they used to speak. It's like, no, this is real slavery. At number seven on the non-believer side is Rationality Rules, a channel that debunks and refutes predominantly religious and supernatural claims. And he's got an awesome beard. Not sure I like the haircut, but the beard makes up for it. It's blindingly obvious it's not always easy to spot. Anyhow, without further ado, let's debunk the hell out of this ignorant argument. Wait a minute, did Jesus strip or was he stripped? Okay, we got number six on the believer side is By the Book Ministries. This is Pastor Clement, who he's got some videos with over a million views. He's obviously very successful. Of course, you know, I don't I don't agree with with uh, the Christian message. But if you're looking for stuff on the other side, or of course, if you're a Christian, you might want to check out his channel. And I happen to think his, his look these days with the bigger beard and more, more hair, he just looks more authoritative and, and I don't know, I think more trustworthy. Check out this clip when, back when he's talking about young earth creation a few years ago. Next question is, do I believe in a young earth or an old earth? implying that if I believe in the young earth, I'm absolutely insane. <laughs> well, sign me up, admit me to your nearest asylum. Okay. Because boy, I believe in a young earth. And tell me if you don't think the same, that he seems like, it seems like the, the newer look just comes across as more powerful. But maybe I'm just a sucker for beard. It's the beards. So we've now abandoned intellectual pursuits. We're no longer talking about reason and rationality, but I'm going to go ahead and believe it anyway. Okay, now we're at number six on the skeptic side, and we have the magic skeptic, Dora McGrath, who started his YouTube career off doing magic tricks. And lately he's been doing um, some series like The Most Annoying Religious People, which I find very entertaining, and you should check out his channel. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the plan. Stupid magic tricks. Right. Let, let, me, let me show you something interesting, okay? Okay. I have here a deck of cards. It's a, it's a strange deck of cards. I don't mean that it's a trick pack, but there is something kind of unique about it. Okay? And beard. <laughs> but an eight ball is a lot of cocaine. Now, coming in on number five on the believer's side is the very entertaining Todd White. Now, I, I, I mean... I love his like Rastafarian look, his hair, his beard. He seems like a cool guy. Now, the stuff he talks about and teaches, I think are totally ridiculous, but nevertheless, he's very entertaining. I can see why he's a successful pastor. I came home that night after I smoked two eight balls of crack cocaine. Funny thing, coke. Coke. And rail means rail. I was the black sheep, the black cloud, the one labeled, the one that will never make it. People in my school find out that I'm a, that I'm a preacher. They're like, that's not, not the Todd that I know. Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion, and the fit for this video is mid-90s Nickelodeon. All right, we're at number five on the skeptic, non-believer side, and we have teacher and Bible scholar and expert Dan McClellan. Now, I, I highly recommend his channel, whether you're a believer or a skeptic or anywhere in between, 
because he really knows his stuff and he breaks down where people make just ridiculous mistakes in interpreting the text. Hey everybody, Dan McClellan here. Where's your beard? Welcome to my YouTube channel, which is still very much under construction. And we can handle this shit like gentlemen. Or we can get into some gangster shit. Claudia's poisoned mushrooms. So she was a uh, husband killer to get her son on the throne, and then she wanted to rule through Nero. All right, we're at number four, and on the believer's side, we have Jimmy Aiken. Now, I, I don't know that much about him. I, he was speaking at a Catholic conference, so I don't, I'm assuming that means he's a Catholic, but I'm not sure. To me, he looks like a country hillbilly from the South. He seems like the kind of guy you go shooting with, and you'd have some hunting dogs in the back of the truck. <laughs> Spent a little time in Texas. Sorry about the accent. It comes naturally when I see guys in cowboy hats. Anyways, all that to be said, he's got a nice beard. So you see what this means. Jesus himself was a serial accomplice to mass animal hunts. But basically what they're doing is the same thing that a thousand other channels do, talking about how they think they've unlocked the secret meaning of their favorite movie, uh, what the author really intended. It's really kind of silly. All right, number four on the skeptic non-believer side, we have Prophet of Zod. Now, this is, this is one of the channels that originally got me interested in creating a podcast, you know, YouTube channel of my own. Um, and, you know, he wouldn't be on this list if he hadn't decided a few months back to switch from his old style where his face is just a bunch of fuzz into FaceTime, which I think was a good decision. He's a super handsome man. And, of course, a lot of that handsomeness comes to the nice, not only the beard, but the color of the beard and just the way it frames the face. So, anyways, um, if you've never seen his channel, I highly recommend it, whether you're a believer or unbeliever, somewhere in the middle. You will get some, you will, you will be entertained and inner and informed. So check it out. A former Christian school principal trying to learn more about the world around him. Then an accidental overdose of actual knowledge interacts with his preconceptions. And a startling metamorphosis occurs. Okay, we're getting down to the end here. Before we get to the top three, I have a couple honorable mentions. Don't mention it. I can't help myself. You really need therapy. Not me. Okay, The Satan's Guide to the Bible came out just a few months back, and it's got well over a million views. I highly recommend it. Now, that isn't a big built-out channel. It's got, like, one video. But, anyways, the whoever designed the character for Satan did a very good job. I rebuke you, Satan. Thanks, Jen. Noted. Or Paul from Apologia, which now he has a regular, very active channel. In fact, one of the most popular skeptic, atheist, you know, non-believer, um, counter-apologetics channel on YouTube. Even worse, all of humanity is destined for eternal conscious torment. But a few can win a free pass if they get lucky in a game of hide-and-seek against an invisible being. Yeah, he seems like a super nice guy, and... I can't believe you haven't noticed his channel yet, but if you haven't, get over there and subscribe to Paul right away. All right, let's get back to the countdown. We are moving on to number three. Uh, to illustrate what I'm trying to say, I'd like to give you a quote from a leading pastor. It's commanded in the Old Testament. They love to march these people out so that they can say, look, look, here are some Christians who are not wide-eyed idiots. Coming in at number three on the believer side is the very charismatic teacher, preacher, Vadi Bachman. You can find his sermons all over YouTube, but he does also appear on his own channel, which is the Grace Family Baptist Church. Now, let it not be said that I agree with Christians, of course, but I will have to say I have a lot of respect for guys that I, the ones that I disagree with the most. He believes in a young earth. He's super fundamentalist and very, you know, he's very hardcore on, you know, the, the Bible says this and that's the way it is. 
I mean, he's preaching at answers in Genesis. So I get to begrudgingly respect if, if you're a hardcore fundamentalist, we do have something in, in common, even though I'm an atheist, and that is we respect the fact that if you're going to believe in the Bible, you might as well believe in the Bible. This is why it matters that Jesus did not sin. A recent worldview survey found that some 45% of professing Christian teenagers believe that Jesus sinned during his earthly ministry. I'm always excited to come to the ark. And I'm not trying to create my own straw man to knock down. I really believe that the vast majority of believers think that even though they can't understand it and that God's ways are so higher and mysterious, that he has an answer for all of this, that it all equals out somehow in the end. All righty, moving on to number three on the skeptic non-believer side, we have Brandon of Mindshift. Now, Brandon almost got himself knocked off this list recently because he had some business stuff and he had to trim his beautiful, gorgeous, full, amazing beard down to something that wasn't, you know, it's still, still beautiful and amazing, but not quite as much as before. Nevertheless, I judged him on the, on the beard that he is, not the beard that he had to be to conform to some business stuff. So we kept him at number three and... I would just like to, to shout out that he's a very new channel, relatively speaking, but it's been very successful. And in no small way, my channel, the start of my channel, in terms of being a serious channel, um, I credit to Brandon's encouragement. And I think he's a great guy. And if you haven't caught his channel yet, I highly recommend jumping over there and subscribing. If everything you thought you knew turned out to be wrong, what if your beliefs and assumptions were challenged? What if you had to rethink everything from scratch? My name's Brandon, and this is Mindshift, and that's exactly what happened to me after 30 years of being a fundamentalist Christian. Since then, it has been a voyage of discovery for me. My only goal has been to follow truth wherever it may lead. And again, this is my entire point. If even one soul has been lost, you can't say it all worked out in the end. The other half is up in the sky is the moon and the blood that rains down becomes people. And it's basically saying that that's where we come from. We come from bloodshed and chaos. All righty, number two for the believer side is Father Michael Nixon. Now he almost didn't make this list because he barely has his own channel. In fact, he's got like a hundred subscribers and he, he doesn't post on it, but he's part of the St. Dominic Media um, channel. So I went ahead, even though he's, he doesn't have an active channel for himself, he's inactive on this other one. I figured he's got such a nice looking beard, I was just going to include him. I think over the years, as long as he doesn't decide to go and, and shave it off, God forbid, that it's going to get gray and a little bit bigger and, and a little... And yeah, it's, it's just a good look. Now, all that to be said, one could only hope that, that handsome older men like this will decide that all of this stuff about Christianity isn't true. And before they get to where they're too old to enjoy life, they'll forget this religious nonsense and go out and enjoy themselves. Power and fury and pageantry and blood and sweat and tears and grown men crying their eyes out college football season has begun. <laughs> and so as we preach the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, as we good, preach the good news, share the good news about a relationship with God, the relationship that God wants to have with us and with the people that we speak to, whether it's in Haiti or your, your neighbor next door, um, we do that recognizing that God is already working in that person's heart. And that, that's good news. So God, God does most of the work anyway. He just kind of lets us come in towards, towards the end and help. <laughs> So not only is this meme dumb, it's meta-dumb because it's designed to protect hypocrites. And hypocrites were the only people in the Bible to incur the wrath of Jesus himself. Alrighty, we're at number two for the skeptic and non-believer side, and we have Dark Matter 2525, who is an icon in the atheist skeptic community. Now, he only qualified for this because he does some shorts and occasionally he does some videos of himself and not, you know, anyone that knows him and knows his channel knows it's about cartoons where he does um, comedic stuff and satire 
and oh man, it's good. Like he's a great writer and his stuff is amazing. But fortunately, he's put his face on the camera enough times to qualify for this and comes in with one of the most gorgeous beards, one of the most amazing looks you will find on, in the YouTube skeptic community, in my opinion. So number two goes to Dark Matter 2525. That is one nice beard. Puts the theist in a lose-lose situation. Either they can be defeated through a more accurate reading of the Bible with context, both literary and historical, or they can be defeated by using their own interpretation to find fault with the Bible itself. <laughs> Oh, she's fine. God damn is gonna like you. As he makes an accusation against Pastor James that it's actually Leighton who's doing that with the text. He's literally reading his presuppositions and traditions into the text and going so far as literally to add words to the text as he's quoting it. Okay, we've hit the number one top spot and on the Christian believer side is Jeff Durbin of Apologia Studios. Now, this guy has got one amazing beard. He looks strong, he looks smart, the beard just the beard just sells what he's saying. Now, I don't agree with him obviously. One of the interesting things when you go out and you listen to the other side and you listen to the the different viewpoints of intelligent Christian apologists, some of whom have, you know, masters and PhDs, and they spent many years studying this stuff, is that you can get two of these teachers, pastors, apologists speaking exactly the opposite. They can, con they can contradict each other completely. Now I ask you, if you're a lay person and you haven't gone and got a PhD, maybe you're planning on doing it, you haven't got one yet, and you're looking at some pastor, especially one that looks really smart and intelligent with a nice beard, like in case, in, in our case here with Jeff Durbin, a guy looks, he, he sounds intelligent, he looks intelligent, and he is intelligent, but he's, he's selling a message that completely contradicts another many other Christian guys that are also intelligent and educated, they all tell you the same thing. I got Jesus in my heart. I got the Holy Spirit speaking. I got the Holy Spirit inspiring me. And I got the good book. And the other guy's wrong. Now you gotta consider something, that only the true and living God can do that. Only a God who's all powerful that actually governs this universe and controls all things and carries everything along to its intended destination. Only a God like that could actually make that sort of a claim. Now listen, religions do try to tell the future and when they fail, they keep pushing along and moving along. And that's a problem. You made mistakes here with a lot of confidence. Let's move on to number one on the skeptic atheist side of the coin. Frank is dismissing the experience of nearly all religious people. People rarely evaluate evidence to become religious. They don't research for years and compare religions and read religious texts and compare doctrines and claims and then decide which religion to pick and which church or which sect or which form of that religion. He's cheated. Definitely a cheater. There's no doubt. I think he should be ashamed. He will be punished. Appropriately. Trust me. It doesn't matter. I know confidently, I'm in love. Total depraved head over heels love. Give up my life love. It's the beard. The beard is a drug. Obey the beard. It's commanded in the Old Testament. Thank you, Jesus. God told me to do this thing.